Hey, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Come on, guys. Good evening. Yeah, everybody. There we go. There we go. Hey, my name is Jimmy Keith. I'm one of your county commissioners, and I'm joined tonight by uh, two. We have other members of our committee, Commissioner Tony Stewart. Okay. Um, about two months ago, when we realized that the American Rescue Plan was coming our way, um, Chairman Evans and I, we got together and we thought, you know, we've got to have a plan together. And not only does it need to be our plan, it needs to be the community plan. So uh, he was kind enough to appoint me as chairman of this organization. And uh, just to give you a little bit of background about where we are and what we're trying to do. The American Rescue Plan, some people have heard it referred to as ARC. Um, they're giving money down to um, municipalities and counties and so on the states and of course the federal government is keeping a lot for themselves. But it is an opportunity for us to try to recover back from what we've done in the last year with COVID. We've, had, we've got some federal people we're talking to, we're talking to people at the state, and the, the thing that we're hearing more and more from everybody is use this money to invest in your community. And that doesn't mean just in buildings or programs, it means invest in your people. To make sure that the people that work by this can now become a little bit more whole, but more importantly than that, all these things that have been put aside for budget reasons in the past, now is our opportunity. The word is, if you don't do it now, you may never ever get a chance to do it again. This is truly transformational money that will all become around once in a lifetime. But a lot of people have been affected. And the purpose of these public meetings are to come out and get feedback. So we want honest feedback from everyone. We're going to have a series of ways that we can do it. There'll be ways, there'll be things where you can individually come up, give us your plans. And we always will stay afterwards answer any questions that you might have. So the way the program comes out, we want to do it in about an hour. But of course, I start up. Um, I am going to recognize um, Mayor Jackie Warner and ask her to say a little couple words. And then you'll be followed by our county manager, Ms. Amy Cannon. And then we have an interactive way that everybody can communicate without having to get up themselves if they don't want to. But then there will also be a way that individually that you can make your, your things known. The American Rescue Plan is a lot of money, but there are also a lot of restrictions on what we can use it for and what we can't use it for. And uh, the county manager is going to go over that in a minute. So without any further ado, man, would like to come and do a welcome. I probably can. I have a loud voice, so I don't have to have the mic. First of all, know that this is a Hope Mills address. And what you're going to find is I'm mayor of Hope Mills, but it's far-reaching, and that's what's so good for us in that meetings like this can be held at this facility. So I want to let you know how important this is to us. But this also would be even more important if we get more people here because our town also got 5.46 million for Hope Mills property municipality, which means if we leverage this money by partnering with the county and with other sources, we can do more than what we can do with just our share. And there's lots of things we need in Hope Mills. So the, the reason for my being here is not just to, to be a part of this, but also to let you know that this is important to Hope Mills. It's important to our community. And anybody that you can get to do the survey, that's what we're pushing to. Because if they do the survey, that's just about the same as being here because we get input. But thank you for coming this evening. Our town manager is here. Our new town manager, Scott Mazeros. Our finance officer, Drew Holland. Uh, Commissioner Bell Flowers is here. So, again, thank you for coming, and we appreciate anything you can do to help us get this more in line for Hope Mills. Thank you. Well, good evening. My name is Amy Cannon. I'm the county manager. And um, first of all, we wanted to uh, introduce the three members of the American Rescue Plan Committee. Um, you've heard from the committee chair, Commissioner Jimmy Keefe, Commissioner Glenn Adams, who also serves as our vice chair on the board as a member of the committee, and you also have Commissioner Dr. Tony Stewart, who's here with us this evening, who actually lives in this district. 
And here are the assistant managers, along with myself, that will be participating this evening. And so um, we're going to try to make this a little interactive. Again, as Commissioner Keefe said, one of the goals of the committee has been to get citizen input. We want your feedback on how these dollars should be allocated and used within the community. And um, we're going to do it in an interactive way. But before we do that, I think it might be helpful if I share what the allowable uses of the funds are. That's important for you to be able to go through the sur survey. Um, the interactive uh, part is more fun. Mine's a little boring, but we'll try to get through it rather quickly this evening. The president um, signed into um, ACT on March 11th, 2021, the American Rescue Plan Act. $350 billion was allocated to states, local governments, territorial, and tribal governments. Cumberland County has been fortunate. We expect to receive $65 million for these key and life-changing projects in our community. Now, now, let me tell you what the purpose of these funds are. States and local governments have been the key entities that have been charged to respond in this public health crisis. And as you know, it's only been 18 months ago that the first case of COVID was detected in the United States. And our lives has been forever changed since that 18 months ago. First, we learned new terminology, which was social distancing. And then schools closed and went to a remote environment. Businesses closed and employees began to work from home. And then finally, our economy was shut down for a significant period of time. That has had a lasting impact on households, individuals, businesses, and local governments. Congress felt that this money would be helpful in the long road to recovery. And so here are just a few key facts about the American Rescue Plan funds. Local governments can um, use these funds for expenses that were incurred from March 3rd, 2021 through December 31, 2024. Everything has to be obligated by December of 2024, but we have through 2026 to actually spend those funds. So the first category I want to go over is about the support to the public health response. The need for responding from a public health perspective is going to continue over the next several months and maybe even years. I think all of us are learning more about that Delta variant that is spreading so quickly and causing our numbers nationally and locally to rise. And so the need for these dollars from a public health perspective will continue. But it's not just public health that's been impacted. COVID-19 has affected um, individuals from a mental health perspective, emotionally, and you may have learned that overdoses during the period of COVID have soared, overdoses and deaths related to overdose. So these funds can be used for mental health issues and programs, substance misuse treatment, crisis centers, and that type of thing. The funds all can, also can be used for planning because uh, the federal government wants local governments to be prepared for that next crisis that we hope is a long, many years away. Another important category under the uh, public health response relates to disparities in public health outcomes. Each of us have been impacted by the pandemic. But I, I don't think we can dismiss that there are particular communities or uh, racial groups or ethnic groups or socioeconomic groups that have been more disproportionately impacted by this virus. The second use of the funds are to impact or address 
negative economic impacts caused by the virus. As you know, the pandemic has created significant financial hardships. Many jobs have been lost as a result of COVID. Many small businesses have closed. And so these funds can be used to assist individuals and households with rental assistance, with food, with mortgage utilities. But we can also use these funds to help those small businesses that have struggled, as well as many nonprofits. Nonprofits provide important services in our community that local governments cannot provide as efficiently. We can also assist those industries that have been impacted. You know, when the economy shut down, the tourism piece of our economy, statewide and nationally, also, also shut down as well. The next category is premium pay for essential workers. Throughout this long-term crisis, essential workers have put their health and well-being at risk each and every day to assist those who have suffered during the crisis. And many of those essential workers may be those that are on the lower tier of the pay scale. They may, may be part of those groups that have been disproportionately impacted by the virus. So because of this, the premium pay is intended to compensate essential workers for the heightened risk that they've um, taken over an extended period of time to be those first responders. The next category is investment in water and sewer. Congress included this category as an eligible expense because they know how critical clean drinking water and public wastewater systems are to good public health. Many of you know that we have areas throughout the county where there's not countywide water, where there's water with contamination, and we have many areas throughout the county where we have failing septic tanks. And so this is a key use for our community. The next is investment in broadband infrastructure. So one thing we've learned from the pandemic Broadband is critical. Reliable, high speed, but affordable broadband is important. Many families found that out as their children, multiple children in one household had to rely on uh, broadband for their education. Many businesses had employees work from home. And each of us may have encountered and done telehealth visits when doctor's offices were not seeing um, patients in person. And so we know that there are key areas throughout the county that don't have access to broadband or affordable broadband. The next category is replacing public sector revenue loss. Many local governments suffered loss in their local revenue, such as local sales tax or occupancy tax. In our community, Cumberland County is resilient. I can say that our sales tax did extremely well during the pandemic. We fared much better than other states. We, the presence of Fort Bragg has been a benefit, but also the stimulus funding. And so replacing public se sector loss of revenue is really not um, going to be appropriate for us, thank goodness. And finally, the last cat category, again, is on those equity-focused services. Again, the funding is to address those communities or those families or demographic groups that have been disproportionately impacted from the virus over this extended period of time. These are families that were struggling before the pandemic, but they're in a uh, much different situation after the pandemic. So it's to address housing issues, disparities, and access to good public health and to address those educational disparities. 
many children have been left behind and, and will have an education gap as children in some of these demographic groups did not receive the quality education that they would have had they been in school. And so um, that ends the presentation. Those are the allowable uses. I'm going to call Sally Shutt, our Assistant County Manager for Public Information, to come forward, and we're going to walk through the survey together. So um, John Souls is going to start handing out clippers, and it's through those clippers that you'll be able to um, respond to the questions. So on the board we have um, the meetings that we've done in person. The next one will be uh, Tuesday night at the Department of Social Services, and we're going to do a virtual session um, on the 29th. Okay, so as John's handing those out, of, um, we do hope that you will encourage um, all your contacts with email, your, your family and friends to go and complete the survey. We set up a special website, Cumberland County, forward slash a Cumberland County, nc.gov, forward slash ARP. All right, so everybody's got their clicker and they're ready to answer questions. We'll start out with an easy one. This is just to get used to the working of the clicker. You're in a race right now. What place are you in when you pass the person who's in second place? Choose A, B, C, or D. Are you in first, second, third, or none of them? Has everyone had a chance to respond? Okay, let's see how they answer. First place. If you can't pretend you said first place, the actual answer is B. You would be in second place. All right, now we're going to practice ranking things. So, we want you to rank your favorite food. What's your favorite type of food? You've got six choices up there. Caribbean, Thai, Mexican, Chinese, Southern, or Italian. Your favorite one will be answered first, and then through those, put them in a rank order. Your favorite to your least favorite. Number two, please rank the following examples of programs and services designed to address the public health impacts. A, services and programs to prevent and mitigate the response to COVID-19. B, 
B, enhance behavioral and mental health services. C, improve the design and execution of public health programs. And D, address disparities in public health outcomes. Everybody had a chance to rank them? Okay. All right. So the top one is A, 29%, those uh, public health services, and everything else, B, C, and D, are exactly even. All right. Now you're going to rank the following examples of programs and services designed to address the negative economic impacts from COVID-19. Assistance to households, assistance to small businesses, assistance to non-profits, aid to impacted industries. Small businesses is followed closely behind assistance to nonprofits, assistance to households, and then aid to impacted industries. Question number four. Please, again, this is another ranking question. Please rank the following examples of programs to address those disproportionately impacted by the pandemic. A, services to address homelessness. B, affordable housing development. C, ad addressing those educational disparities we talked about. And D, promoting healthy environments for children. Has everyone had time to rank those four? No? Okay, hold on. Oh, you don't have a clicker. <laughs> Al, whenever you're ready. Okay, so we have a tie, C and D at 27%, those educational disparities and prom promoting healthy environments for children. All right, rank right. the following types of infrastructure projects or programs that were a priority. Public water projects to improve access to clean drinking water, provide public sewer to address septic tank problems, projects to improve resilience of infrastructure to severe weather events, and then broadband infrastructure to unserved or underserved communities.
Has anyone had a chance to? What you are not considering is what area can you spend funds that have a chance to be recouped. 65 million becomes 130 million, and then the note is suing DuPont slash DeMorse. Whole House Water Solutions for residents of Gray's Creek for PFAS and PFOS um, water contamination. Make sure local fire departments have the funds, services, and supplies they need. This is the county fire departments with COVID expenses. Funds available to emergency services organizations to offset the ever-increasing cost of equipment and supplies to respond to COVID types of this equipment and supplies are vital in maintaining the safety of emergency responders and the public. The next one, drug enforcement programs. And the second note is to increase police and sheriff's departments for better public protection. Senior citizens need ways to communicate and assist when no area is available to coordinate help. Child care or assistance when kids aren't in school so parents can work. A second, food distribution from schools when no transportation is available from home. Drug enforcement units for um, Hope, Hope Mills Police Department and more money for police. Consider a regional addition, initiative and partnering with the other ARP recipients. Critical infrastructure needs clean water, sewer, and broadband. Homeless prevention programs that includes building a community opportunity center. Additional funding for first responders Veterans' resources are needed to ensure they have what they need. Enhance emergency shelter backup power. And enhance equipment for disaster response. Support funding to aid first responders and funding for supplies and medical supplies for COVID-related issues. All right, I think I've read them all. If I've missed yours, just raise your hand. Okay. All right, so now put your clickers back. You share some information with different projects and everything. And if you've seen our online survey, you realize that we have some demographic information. And that is so if you report out to the Board of Commissioners and the ARP committee, they'll know well, who responded to our survey because we're going to ask you some things about yourselves. Are you a Cumberland County resident? Yes or no? You don't have to rank anything, just yes or no. It's 28301, 28303, 304, 305, 306, 307, 310, 311, uh, 28312, and 28314. 
Yes, ma'am. We have a next question about those who live outside the city of Fayetteville. Yeah. Oh, I. Yeah, so if you're not in the city of Fayetteville, you cannot respond to this question. We're using the same survey at every meeting. All right, let's see. All right, so um, someone is in 28306. Now, how many of you, those of you who live outside the city of Fayetteville or other areas of Cumberland County, please select your zip codes 28312, 28342, 28348, 28356, 390, 391, and 395. How many grades pretty You don't have 28306, and that's not, we don't live in Fayetteville. Fayetteville in the city of Fayetteville. 28306. Well, is on the other side? It was right here in Grace Creek. All right, then we have a mistake, and then we will note that. But also the ones that are in Cumberland County that are in St. Paul's address are listed. Yeah. 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 Our taxes to Cumberland County, but our income comes through St. Paul's. So now we will take the Yes, when you raise your hand for 28306, came us with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. seven. So the reason why I'm 28306 is because I have, I live in Hope Mill, but I have a fatal address. Mm -hmm. Because I live, I live in Camden, uh, Kensington Village across from Millstone, and that whole area is 306. So we have a faulty wording on our question, so we'll go through. We want to make sure we get everyone accounted for. Okay, please tell me the other zip code. 2834. 2834. Correct. 2834. Raise your hands. One person. We also have a part of the address out here also. Okay, Chief Herman, was that part of the address? 2834. 28371, Candace. Okay, has everyone been accounted with a zip code? All right, when you logged in, when you registered, we've got your zip codes there as well. Okay, thank you. Let's move on. Has the COVID crisis negatively affected your family financially? Not at all, very little, somewhat, or severely? Are you connected in some way to the military?
Are you a veteran or a spouse of a veteran? Are you affiliated with a nonprofit organization that provides services to citizens who have been negatively affected by COVID-19? responses there and now I think that's oh yeah this is my favorite one would you like to receive information in a newsletter or emails about Cumberland County government activities services or programs yes or no you also have the opportunity to do that when you sign in and that way if you would like the information we've got your email address okay let's see how all right well Try to win the others over at another time. <laughs> okay, so um, this is again just some information where you can find that survey. The survey is just like what you've done this afternoon. You can sit and do it on your couch at home. Your friends can do it there. It's available at cumberlandcountync.gov forward slash ARP. It's also on our website on the very home page. There are meetings there. Now, if you have any questions, you may email those to us at arp at co.com on nc.us. Turn it back over to Commissioner Keith. Yeah, I'll keep that up. Okay, so if you have any friends or other family members who did not get an opportunity to participate tonight, go to the survey. You can get the same information. Uh, be passionate about your, your group. Okay. Everybody that you know, because we're only as good as the information that we're getting here. So if it's important to you, please fill out that survey. It, um, it, it does help. One thing that we, we didn't talk about with the ARP money is we have to get our guidance from the Department of Treasury. And, the, and although they've given some broad guidance and said, okay, this works or this may work or that works, we have to be a little creative but they always put that caveat on there is, if you commit and you spend it, and then we don't agree with what you're spending it on, you have to pay it back. So we're just trying to make sure that we get all of our, our answers done and we do this in a way that can really impact the community the best we can. So um, again, um, most of the staff will stay after for a little while. Um, if you have any questions or you'd like to talk about some things specifically, before we go, I would like to recognize Commissioner Stewart again, part of our committee. Would you like to say anything? Hello, everybody. I just want to tell you so much for coming out. Um, it was very, very important um, to the committee that we come out to hear from the citizens. Um, without you all, then that responsibility sits solely on us, but it's important to us to hear what you have to say. This is not a one-man show. We are a community of citizens, and we all live here and work here, and we all have 
everybody in mind, best interest in mind. So thank you so much for coming out. Again, I want to reiterate, please, please, please tell your friends and your family that live in Cumberland County to take the survey. Um, we want to make sure that we hear everybody's voice. So if we do something wrong, I'm going to ask them if they took the survey. They don't like what we did. So thank you all again for coming out and um, have a great evening. And oh, let me put our recognized commission, um, Chairman Evans. <laughs> Get ready to, he's gonna give us some party words. Oh, okay. <laughs> you wanna come up here? Uh, what, what a fine way to say, come on up and speak. <laughs> Good evening. Again, I wanna reiterate the fact that um, what Commissioner Stewart said and also um, Commissioner Keith, we are very happy to be here to see. Um, I want you to know that the staff and employees of Cumberland County team work very hard for you each and every day. And I'm so honored to be a part of that team to make things happen for the betterment of our communities. Um, each of these individuals that you see, well, the team stand up so everybody can see you. Thank you guys for coming. I just want you to know that this was important to the committee, which is uh, Jim is the chair, to make sure that our citizens, as well as commissioners, will make sure that our citizens are participating in the process of deciding what to be done with those funds. And the listing that I heard over here on this board, every one of the items that were listed, I believe that we are working on every one of those. Are we not? We are working on every one of those. And so we are, so that goes to show you that we're more in tune with you than you think. So again, thank you for coming out. We are happy to be here with you. And God bless each and every one of you. Have a good evening. That includes the for formal part um, of the presentation tonight. But again, uh, if you'd like to have any questions, uh, please feel free to approach any of the staff. Uh, commissioners will stay around too. Um, thank you again. Your participation, your voice matters very much. And we appreciate everything. Thank you.